Hi, I'm Alex Mullins, a program manager on the Azure DevOps team. Today I'd like to introduce you, or maybe reintroduce you, to Azure Artifacts. Azure Artifacts is one of the five services in Azure DevOps, a suite of tools from Microsoft designed to help software teams plan, build, and deliver software. Azure Artifacts specifically focuses on managing all of the artifacts and all of the tools, the binaries, anything around your software development process that's not source code. That includes things like packages. We support common package types like Maven, NuGet, NPM, and Python. So whether you're a .NET developer writing C Sharp or a Java developer, maybe you're writing some Node.js server code or writing a front end using a bunch of NPM packages, Azure Artifacts has you covered. And we can store both your private packages and help you keep a safe copy of all the packages you use from public sources like the NuGet gallery or PyPI. If none of those package types are what you're looking for, we also have universal packages, a very lightweight and easy to use package type that can wrap up any file or set of files that you want to publish that has great deduplication so we can minimize all of the files that you send up to the server, especially if you're working with large sets of files that only change a little bit version over version. In addition, if you're writing code, especially native code, and you want to help teams across your organization debug, we, uh, Azure Artifacts contains a symbol server that you can use as well. Azure Artifacts also powers the new pipeline artifacts that you'll hear more about from Azure Pipelines, which help you really quickly move files between jobs and stages as part of your DevOps pipelines. Now, if you've been with us for a while, there's a few exciting announcements we have at Build this year. The first is around pay per gigabyte pricing. We heard your feedback that our user licensing model just simply didn't make sense for a lot of you. It was hard to set up. It was challenging to understand. It required a lot of kind of manual work getting and assigning and buying licenses. And so we've moved to a straight consumption-based model that'll look very familiar if you're coming from other Azure services. Every Azure DevOps organization gets two gigabytes of storage for free, and there's tiered pricing after that that you can find more about on Azure.com. If you're an existing organization that's used Azure Artifacts in the past, you'll get 12 months of free usage between, as a transition between user licensing and pay per gigabyte storage. In addition, our support for Python packages and our universal packages are now fully GA. They've been in preview for a while, and we've already seen teams across Microsoft and outside taking production dependencies on them, but they're now fully GA and ready for you to use. And we look forward to your feedback. Now, let's hop out of slides and take a look at a few demos of Azure Artifacts. I'll tab over here to my Azure Artifacts page. Uh, if you're new to Azure DevOps, we have our set of services over here, as you saw on an earlier slide, over here on the left. Uh, I'm going to go to Azure Artifacts, which is here, the pink set DACA packages. And on the Artifacts page, it's fairly straightforward. I have a set of feeds. Think of feeds as a way of containing your packages. By default, you'll have one package feed that you can use across the entire organization. But if you want more control, if you have teams that need to share packages with just a subset of people, you can use individual package feeds to do that. Package feeds in Azure Artifacts are cross-package type. So you can have NuGet, NPM, Maven, Python, whatever kind of packages you want, all inside the same feed managed by the same set of permissions. So there's no managing multiple repositories just to have multiple package types in your organization. In addition, Azure Artifacts supports what we call upstream sources, which help you use packages from public places like the NuGet gallery or PyPI in your feed. I've already set them up, but we'll take a look at how that looks. If I go to feed settings, and upstream sources. You can see this feed is configured to use all of the upstream sources that we have available. Going back to the feed, what that looks like, if I clear our feed filter, you can see that in addition to the packages that I've published, these are my own company's packages, I have packages that we've kept safe from PyPI, from NPMJS, from the NuGet gallery. Uh, so this is a great way to keep all of the packages that you depend on in one place. In addition, you can also see that we have usage statistics on your packages, both number of downloads and number of unique users. So across your organization, you can see the packages that are the most popular. You can see in this demo feed, we don't have a lot of real usage. But if I click over to one of our production feeds, you can see that that starts to help you ascertain which packages are worth supporting and which ones you might want to consider deprecating. Now, once you've configured a feed with upstream sources, coming back to my demo feed, You'll click Connect to Feed and do some setup on the client to basically tell your computer about the Azure Artifacts feed. I've already done that. And so when you want to use a new package from NPM, in this case, let's assume I want to install the chalk package, I can do that. 
And along the way, Azure Artifacts will keep a copy of this package, put it into the feed so that any future developer that uses it can get it directly from Azure Artifacts. No need to go all the way to NPM. So let's go ahead and go back. I'll refresh here. And now I can see that we've saved a copy of that chalk package into the feed. Next, let's take a look at how Azure Artifacts and Azure Pipelines work well together to help you use and keep safe the artifacts that you use as part of your DevOps pipelines. Moving over into Azure Pipelines, what I have here is a very simple CI build. I'm going to take one of the packages that we looked at earlier and build it in Azure Pipelines and automatically publish it over to Azure DevOps. Let's go and take a look at what this pipeline looks like. You can see I have a fairly straightforward Azure Pipeline. I'm triggering a new build every time uh, there's a check into the master branch. I'm going to use a Windows VM. And I'm going to do a couple things here in my Azure Pipeline's YAML file. I'm going to use the .NET Core CLI task, which basically runs .NET commands, but also helps me set up authentication to Azure Artifacts uh, feeds. In this case, I'm going to restore packages. This, pack um, this project depends on the NUnit package, so it'll go ahead and install that from my code sharing demo feed. I'm going to pack this package. I'm going to create a release version of it. And then finally, I'll use the .NET Core CLI again, so I get .NET auth set up correctly, and I'll push this package out to the code sharing demo feed. So I'm going to switch to Visual Studio Code briefly, and I can update this package. In this case, we're just going to change the version number. And we'll go and commit that. And once that's pushed up to the server, if we go back and look at our pipeline again, I can see that there's going to be a new build running in the background, and that's going to publish a new version of my package straight to the feed. So that we don't have to wait for that, I'll actually jump and look at the last version of the package that we published yesterday. So going back to my code sharing demo feed, let's go find the bacon package. We've added provenance information inside of Azure Artifacts to make it easy to connect the packages that you produce to the builds that they came from. So you can see in this case, within the starter packages project that I'm working in, I have this build that ran yesterday, and I can click over. And you see we're back to that same set of build results, and I can now kind of understand where my packages came from, whether they were built. Um, and this can help me do things like make sure that packages didn't come from inside a developer machine and instead came through my proper Azure pipelines. Now, in this case, I've published a package to my internal feed, and that's great if I want to share it with users inside my organization. But I can also use releases in Azure Pipelines to take this package and publish it out to NuGet.org. So let's take a look at that. I'll switch over to Release Management. In this case, let's take a look at my publish to NuGet.org release. And inside Release Management, if I click on Add next to Artifacts, there's an Azure Artifacts artifact type, which we've newly updated here for build this year. And in it, I can select the feed and the package that I want to publish. In this case, collect my code sharing demo feed. And I know that I want to publish this bacon package out to NuGet.org. I'll publish the latest version every time this release runs. You can customize that if you want. And most importantly, I'm going to skip extracting this package so that I have a copy of the actual NUPKG file that I can publish up to NuGet.org. In this case, I'm not actually going to add this because I have a pre-existing artifact set up, which looks the same. You can see that here. And then it's really a straightforward release to go ahead and take this package out and publish it to NuGet.org. In this case, I'm going to use a Visual Designer release. I'm going to select the NuGet task, use the push command. I'm going to select that artifact that I pulled down that we just looked at. And I've set up a service connection to help me publish this out to NuGet.org. So I'll go ahead and let that happen now. Perfect. And again, we won't wait for that to complete, but know that we have in the past published this package successfully out to NuGet.org. Now, for one final demo, let's take a look at universal packages. Again, these are kind of a lightweight, flexible package type that you can use to share any tools or binaries or scripts, anything that you don't want to check into your Git repository, but that you want to use as part of your Azure pipelines or other DevOps processes. So in this case, I'm going to jump directly to a shell. And when I go to publish uh, an Azure universal package, I use the Azure CLI. This is something you can get through the Azure Artifacts documentation. So I'm going to say Azure Artifacts Universal and Publish. In this case, I'm going to take this whole repo that I have of starter packages. So that has some things I've checked in to Git. And it also has a set of files that I'm ignoring, things that are binaries that really don't belong in Git, but that I want to put somewhere. And I've told it about my code sharing demo organization, my feed, 
and I've given it a name and a version. And that's really kind of the core component of a universal package is the name, the version, and I've given it a description in this case as well. And then finally, I'm having it publish the path that I'm currently on. So I'll let that run. And it's really as simple as that. And then if I want to use that package in an Azure pipeline, for instance, I can set up the same sort of artifact that you saw me set up in the previous demo and pull these tools or these samples right back down into my release process. Great. While that uploads in the background, let's talk a little bit about what's next for Azure Artifacts. Probably most excitingly, by the end of Q2, we'll be adding public feeds to Azure Artifacts. So if you're doing open source development on GitHub or with a public Azure repo, and you want to share nightly or pre-release versions of your packages, packages that aren't quite ready for NuGet.org or NPMJS, wherever you're trying to publish them, we can store those for you in Azure Artifacts, but have them publicly and world accessible. So look for more on that by the end of Q2. In addition, we'll be refreshing a lot of the Azure Artifacts hub pages uh, to make them easier and a lot faster to use, especially if you have kind of big packages in your feeds. And finally, we'll be doing more with upstream sources to make them even simpler and easier to use, uh, especially if you're working across Azure DevOps organizations or in a large enterprise, something like the size of Microsoft. To learn more about Azure Artifacts, you can use the ACAMS link that's there on the screen, or you can hit me up on Twitter at Alex Mullins. Thanks, and have a great Microsoft Build 2019.